Hello, friends. Uh, welcome to Physics for All. Uh, today, I've, I'm going to discuss the solution of IIT Jam Physics 2021, uh, the solid states portion, which was asked in that paper that I'm going to discuss today. Earlier, I've discussed the mathematical physics portion and the thermodynamic portion, which is available on my channel. So let's get started. So this was the question that was uh, asked in the IIT Jam Physics 2021. It says that the metallic lithium has BCC structure uh, each unit has a cubic of cube of side A. Each unit cell is a cube of side A. The number of atoms per, uh, per unit volume. So uh, it is a standard result. And in BCC crystal, the number of uh, uh, lattice points uh, per unit cell is two uh, lithium. So the number of atoms per unit volume uh, will be uh, two by A cube, right? Because uh, there are two atoms per unit. Uh, cell the and the uh, volume of the unit cell is a cube so that's why the number of atoms per unit volume will be two cube so what i'm saying is in a bcc structure uh, is this the bcc structure two three four five six seven eight and one at right at the center of the body so eight corners uh the number of atoms in unit cell uh, bcc unit cell we have uh one by eight times eight plus one that's two so that is uh, two atoms are uh, there uh, in a cube volume if a is the side of this unit cell which is given in the question so per unit volume volume two by a cube number of atoms will be there so option c is correct out of that okay this was the first question that was asked. And in the uh, second question that was asked was at some temperature T, two metals A and B having Fermi energies, epsilon A, epsilon B respectively, the free electron density of A is 64 times that of B, the ratio of epsilon B upon epsilon B is. So it was uh, a numerical answer type question that was asked in the exam. And uh, we have been given two metals, metals A and metal B. And the Fermi energy of A is uh, given as epsilon A, and the Fermi energy of B as given as uh, is given as epsilon B. The free electron density of Na of A is 64 times of A. Let me call the free electron density of A as Na, and small n sub A and small n sub B for the uh, B metal. Then we have to find out the ratio of this. If it is given that Na is 64 times N B. All right. So in case of uh, in case of three-dimensional metal, the number density n in general is n by v is equal to uh, kf cube by 3 pi square this is the formula where kf is the fermi wave vector right so in case of metal a this expression will read as something this where n is the number of uh, 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 electrons uh, number of electrons okay in the metal and v is the volume so this is uh, basically small n is the uh, electron density electron number density all right, so that is uh, VA, so that is equal to KF subscript A. Uh, I've associated with this so that I, uh, it comes to know that we are, I'm talking about the met metal A right now. Similarly, for NB, uh, this expression will read something like this. And I will have KF B Q uh, divided by 3 pi squared. So let's say this equation 1, this is equation 2. Let me divide. Uh, okay, so uh, either you can divide or this is given to you that n equal to 64 times n b. So if I uh, use this, I'm going to get k f a whole cube divided by 3 pi square is equal to 64 times k f b whole cube divided by 3 pi square, which means k f a is actually equal to 4 times k f b. Okay that's the relation we get and what is asked in the question was epsilon a over epsilon b and epsilon a is h cross square k f a square by two uh, mass of electron and uh, similarly h cross by two k f b square by m is the mass of electron and everything else is cancels out so what we are left with k f a over k f b whole square which means that uh, we'll get 16 by one, because if we use this here, we'll get 16 by one. So the answer was uh, 16. Okay, so here the answer was 16. Okay, and uh, 
next question that was asked was if crystal has a monoclinic structure are with lattice parameter a b c and angle this so monoclinic structure is where a b c all are different and one angle is not 90 degree that is given as beta so if i construct like uh, like this this uh, something like this let's say this is uh, uh, a this is my uh, a this is my c and this is angle is beta equal to 99 degree and i have uh, uh, the the third side uh, which is perpendicular to this right in, in the cube so in the cubic crystal what happens suppose this is the cubic crystal uh, 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 cubic um, simple cubic for example so you see a b c all are equal and angles these angles uh, uh, this is called uh, let me call this b this is called c so this angle is beta this a the angle in front of a is called alpha the angle in front of c is called gamma so these all are uh, basically 90 degrees in case of simple cubic but in case of mono uh, uh, lithic uh, sorry monoclinic this uh, angle is given as 99 degree and uh, it's not one angle is not 90 degree so uh, using this if, uh, let me call this as b side so this angle is 90 degree this is also 90 but this is not 90 right it's 99 degree so it has been asked that the it undergoes a phase transition to tetragonal structure from mono a clinic from monoclinic to tetragonal phase transition is taking place or uh, tetragonal um, structure change is taking place with the lattice parameters now tetragonal uh, in the tetragonal structure we know that a equal to b or any two arms are equal but not equal to c the third uh, parameter is not equal and angles however all are equal pi by two right so uh, if i Calculate. So what he is asked here is that when uh, this crystal takes transition from monoclinic to tetragonal, what is the fractional change in volume uh, that happens due to this transition? So if we calculate the volume in the monoclinic uh, phase, in the monoclinic uh, structure, then we are uh, going to get the volume as, let me uh, write at V as sub M. So that I uh, denotes that I'm calculating the volume for the mono uh, clinic structure. So here, if you see, if I calculate Vm, what will be? Uh, it is the magnitude of this area of the base times the height, right? So this will be A C sine beta times B. Uh, that will be the volume in the monoclinic phase and in the tetragonal phase the, uh, it is pretty simple like tetragonal is like that at only uh, apart from for the fact that a equal to b is not equal to c the volume in this case will be simply uh, a into b into c right because uh, all angles are 90 degrees so now you see the uh, change in volume delta v is uh, vm minus vt and uh, if I calculate Vm by my calculator, if putting the value of A, C, B over here, A is for the monoclinic phase, uh, A was 5.14 angstrom and uh, C is 5.30, B is 5.20 and sine 99 degree. And that turns out to be by my calculator like 139.9, 139.914 139 angstrom cube. Okay, that's what I get as Vm. Similarly, if I do the same calculation for Vt here, I'm going to get A is 5.09 in the given question. And uh, B was given as, uh, uh, okay, so B will be same because it is uh, uh, tetragonal. So 5.09 and C is 5.27, okay. Uh, so you, we, when we calculate it, it turns out to be 136.53 E5 uh, angstrom cube. So if I calculate the difference between the two, delta V is equal to Vm is 139.914 minus 136.535 angstrom cube. So this is going to give me um, 3.3783. Uh, angstrom cube so that's the delta v and we have been asked to find out the fractional change in volume right so delta v by v that will be equal to 3.3783 angstrom cube divided by the uh, initial volume which was in the uh, monoclinic phase right 139.914 okay angstrom cube so i have to divide this number 
and uh, I will get as 0 0.02414, right? So that, uh, and in the question it was asked the round off uh, the answer by two, deci uh, for two decimal places. So if I round off it, so it comes out to be 0 0.02. So if point oh, no, in the answer key it was given point oh two two point oh three, so that is fine. Okay, so now the next question, the last question that was asked is uh, an X-ray diffraction experiment with copper crystals having let us prism meter three point six one angstrom. X-rays of wavelength of point oh nine zero nanometer are incident to the family of planes one one zero. The highest order presented. Okay, so you, we know the Bragg diffraction law. That is two d sine theta equal to n lambda. So basically, we have to calculate the n here, which what is the maximum value of n with this data. So we know that the, for the cubic case, D is A upon under the root H square plus K square plus L square. And uh, uh, for the maximum N, because lambda is fixed, right? Lambda is a fixed value. And D is also fixed by the you know uh, crystal. So the maximum value of sine theta, uh, to calculate the maximum value of N, we have to put the maximum value of sine theta, which is one. So I'm calculating as N max times lambda. And uh, for this calculation, I will calculate n max is equal to twice of a, a is given as 3.61 angstrom in the question divided by under the root hkl is 110 here, hkl. And uh, I have the uh, in the denominator lambda, which is 0 0.090 times 10 to the power minus 9. I've converted everything into meter. And now basically this will be a dimensionless because the numerator and denominator has the same dimension. So what we get ultimately is under root two times 3.61 divided by 0 0.090 into 10 to the power minus one. So if we calculate this number, this turns out to be 5.6 one, uh, 5.67. Okay, so it is, uh, certainly less than six. So, and this is an order of differentiation. So it cannot, uh, order of diffraction. So it cannot be in fraction. It will be in uh, uh, whole number. So we can approximate the n max, n max is approximately five because it's less than six. Okay. So the answer uh, in, should be five as, as it was given in the um, uh, answer key. So that's it for solid state physics. Um, thanks for watching.